All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look into simulating partial differential equations using grids, and we're going to visualize the results. Now, in the last video, we had a look at Fiveflow's math module. And just as a quick recap, I'm going to import Fiveflow and create a random tensor using spatial dimensions, because we're going to need these for the grids. And let's call this our values. Now built on top of the math module, there's the differential geometry module. But the only thing we're going to need for now is the box class, which is an axis line slice of space uh, defined by its lower and upper corner. So this would be a unit box, for example. Or we could also use the special slicing constructor that looks like this. Let's call this the bounds for our simulation later on. Now, the field module is where many of the core classes of Fiveflow are located. So fields are just values defined at every point in space. And there are many ways to do this. Grids are one example. There are also point clouds and implicit representations of fields. And most of the physics functions and visualization functions are tailored for fields. Now, we don't have to use fields. You can also write your whole simulation using just the math module. However, fields have the advantage that changing the resolution, domain size, or boundary conditions of your simulation later on is much easier if you use grids or fields. OK, so let's create a simple centered grid. Now, centered grid requires three things. One is the values. And then we also need to specify the physical size and location of this values tensor in space, which is the bounds and an extrapolation value, which defines the values outside of this tensor. So for the extrapolation, I'm just going to use zeros now and give it the bounds. And now we can visualize this field using the plotting function, like so. And note that because we provided the physical size of this grid, Fiveflow was able to correctly label the axes. And also the grid cells are non-square, which of course is because um, we use the unit box, but the resolution of our grid um, was not had, yeah, had different x and y sizes. Now we can do math operations with fields almost the same as with tensors, only the functions are located in the field module. So we could compute the cosine of our grid, for example, and note that the extrapolation is also affected by these functions here. Now the constructor of our centered grid also allows us to resample other objects. For example, we could just give it a constant. And we, of course, need to specify the resolution here. Uh, so this would be a constant field. Or we could also pass a different field, like noise, for example, which is an implicit representation that generates random fluctuations. Or we could also give it an existing grid. So let's create a new grid using our old grid. Maybe give it different size. and a different resolution as well. And then let's plot both of those. Now you can see that the second field contains our first field. And on the outside, it used the extrapolation value, which we gave it here. Now if we come back to the overview page and scroll down a little, you see a class diagram containing the core classes of Fiveflow. So in the last video, we already used the tensor and shape class. Um, now, we just created a box and a centered grid. And so for the extrapolation, there's also its own class. Um, so we just use zero here, but there are a bunch of predefined extrapolations as well, um, which are located in the extrapolation sub package. So for example, we could use periodic extrapolation, which will create these repeating structures here. Or we could just extrapolate the boundary values of the values tensor. Um, which would be the boundary extrapolation, and that looks like this. Now, so far, we have only used spatial dimensions, which result in scalar fields. Now, we could also add a channel dimension um, to create a vector field. So I'm going to do this here. And I'm also just going to scale down the vectors a little to make the plots look nicer. So this would be a vector field, and we can also add batch dimensions 
maybe let's create two independent samples here, uh, which are then also resampled. We can get the whole list of dimensions using the shape attribute of our grid, similar to tensors. Um, and the resolution is basically just the spatial part of the shape. Uh, but we could also filter for the batch dimensions or the channel dimensions. Okay, so now let's do some physics. Uh, I'm just going to select the first, um, first sample here. And the, the physics functions are listed here in the physics modules. So we have things like diffusion, fluid related functions, vection, and so on. So let's just diffuse our field um, using explicit diffusion, maybe with a low diffusivity, and you can also give it a time increment. I'm also going to set the substeps a bit higher uh, to, to make it more accurate. So now this should be a smoother version of the field here above. And maybe let's also do some advection. So for grids, we would typically use semi-Lagrangian advection, which creates virtual particles at the cell centers and traces them back in time. So we can advect our field along the field lines of itself, for example. Um, let's give it the time increment. And then we have an advected field as well. Uh, the difference may be a bit hard to see here, so I'm just going to run this a couple of times. To add the results to a list. Okay, so now time goes from left to right. And here we have our physics. Um, it may be a bit easier to see if we only consider the x component. So... I'm just going to slice along the vector dimension and select the X. And I'm also going to remove the color bars to make the plot a bit easier to understand. So here the positive values, the bright regions, slowly move to the right, while the negative values move to the left. And when they meet, they create these shock waves that slowly annihilate. So this simulates Berger's equation which is a very simplified fluid model consisting only of an advection and a diffusion term, which we simulate here. Now this simulation was run on centered grids, but FiveFlow also supports staggered grids. So staggered grids are unfortunately a bit more involved because the velocity values are sampled on the face centers. So the components are sampled at different locations. This makes computing the divergence much easier, but for things like advection, you first need to interpolate all the components to all the faces. Luckily, Fiveflow can take care of that for us. So I could just use staggered grid here instead, and we can run the physics again, and you'll see that it still runs through, and now we have a simulation of Berger's equation with staggered grids. Now for a full list of available functions, um, you can click here on any of these modules, or you can also click on any of the classes here in the class diagram. I also highly recommend that you have a look at the Fluids tutorial. So this is a notebook that you can open in Google Colab, and it walks you through setting up an incompressible fluid simulation in two dimensions. You can also have a look at the demos repository, where most of these demos use grids to create some kind of simulation. That's it for now. See you in the next video.